Another Sunflower showdown for Jerome Tang, another overtime game, and another victory. The Cats win it tonight, 75-70 to over the Jayhawks here in Manhattan. Look, Jerome Tang said expect to win after last year's game, and full transparency, I did not expect to win tonight <laughs> for the Wildcats because things had not been going well. Four straight losses. The last three were gruesome in the way that they played out. But it was very clear from an early point in this game that this K-State team was playing differently tonight. Namely, look, we saw the offense take a step in the right direction in Stillwater. You had all big three guys scoring at the same time. Kaluma, Carter, and Perry combined for 50. Tonight they combined for 58. They all came through and did their part on the offensive end like we've talked about needing to do. Nobody defended in Stillwater, though, and tonight, from the get-go, K-State made life pretty miserable for KU. They were under, I think, 25% from three in the game, and they never really got too many easy looks. The easiest was that little push shot that K.J. Adams is dynamite at. So K-State put it all together tonight and proved what we knew. When it does all come together, the effort, the hustle, the intensity, the talent, and the IQ, they can be a dangerous basketball team. Now this just has to be a jumping off point for the final eight Big 12 games. They can do it all in one. Yeah, that's why I, I was one of the few people, and I'm going to dunk the football or you know, spike the football a little bit. I was one of the, dunk the football, please, Jason Witten. <laughs> yeah, dunk the football. I was one of the few people that gave Kansas State a shot tonight, and it was because we know who this team is, I think, to an extent. Now there's a lot of unpredictability. There's a lot of volatility. But Jerome Tang said it himself following the loss against Oklahoma State. They pick and choose when they kind of want to compete at a high level. Well, they picked and choose basically all the teams that have like notoriety, right? That uh, that have a you know a powerful name. It being Villanova, it being Baylor, and now you get Kansas and Bramlage Coliseum. So I knew that they would play their best version of their basketball. Now Jerome Tang apparently told them afterwards that they still can play a better brand of basketball, and it's probably true. But you still got a really really good one, and I just had an inkling that that would be the case because. If you're going to pick and choose, obviously you're going to pick the Sunflower Showdown in Bramlage Coliseum. Why wouldn't you? So there's that. You also had Kansas, you know, short turnaround after what I think was probably an emotional game for them uh, against Houston because I think it took it personal that they were an underdog. And Allen Fieldhouse, short turnaround. They have no bench. They basically played no bench tonight. Uh, Kansas State kept them off the offensive glass. If you told me before the game, Kansas State would outscore Kansas on second chance points. Uh, I would probably think you have. Five eyeballs. So that was that was a big uh, moment as well. Uh, free throw line was big. Three point line was big. They made six more threes than KU. Again, and the law of averages coming into play was another factor for me the, that I thought this would be a close game. Houston's the best defense in America, and Kansas shot almost 70% from the field against them. That's not sustainable. That's an outlier. So you knew the law of averages would probably come into play. And you also knew Kansas State would probably play inspired on the defensive end just because of how. You know, bad it looked and probably had a pride check moment for what they did in Stillwater against Oklahoma State on that end of the floor, particularly in the second half where I think they allowed 46 points. So for me, I'm not going to say I was shocked that this result happened because I think there were a lot of factors that contributed to this result uh, being likely. And that's why when everyone's like, saw the four and a half point line, it'll slam it, slam it. And I even wrote an article yeah. I would throw caution to the wind on this and I basically laid out all those factors so the trick moving forward I guess we could probably you know transfer into some other topics is to stop picking and choosing just let this be yourself yeah that's that's a good point and one of the other positives tonight for K-State was look it will draw Colbert was one of those we can get to him and how he played because this was similar to the Baylor game for him where K-State needed something. He came in, gave them good minutes, and it was enough time for other guys to either get going or rest up. And so Jarrell Colbert, I think they pointed out after the game, he had an insane plus-minus for not scoring in the game. He missed a couple free throws. But Colbert was big inside because, look, KU doesn't have, like, massive depth at that position. But K.J. Adams and Hunter Dickinson are two of the best in the country, and what they do well offensively, they are shoulders above others. And really – they had their moments in tonight's game. I think Hunter Dickinson still ended up near 20 points, but it was one of those games where it didn't feel like it was impactful in a way, and that is a credit to Jarrell Culver and really the K-State defense at large that against Oklahoma State, the switches were off, they were slow, there wasn't effort in getting off of them. 
tonight, K-State was firing all cylinders defensively. Yeah, Jarrell Colbert was one of my you know, players that just blew me away tonight. I think he ended up playing 16 minutes, didn't play a minute in overtime. My criticism or head-scratching moment uh, and I wrote this and I tweeted it, and they're probably going to roll their eyes when they see it, was like, how does he not play more, right? Um, especially when you see a plus minus. I think one stat thing I saw said plus 18. I looked in you know, the stats thing and said plus 21. Whatever it is, he did that in 16 minutes without scoring a point. But he also had three assists, and he had three rebounds. He was doing everything. He was blocking shots, defending the rim. He was cutting off some of the, the penetration. Uh, I think all three assists were for three pointers because he just was playing a good inside. <laughs> excuse me, a good inside out game on the glass. Uh, there wasn't a lot he did wrong, or little to no wrong, and he just made a significant impact in the amount of minutes he, that he had. And like I said, I w- questioned it, uh, called it a head scratcher. Jerome Tang defended it and it basically addressed that because I think he knew that people were going to say <laughs> he's like. Mm-hmm. You see this and you wonder why we only played him 60 minutes. He, I think they're still trying to get complete trust because they don't think he's physically game ready uh, to take on a big load of minutes. I would have pushed him to the brink to see what I could have got a little bit extra because he didn't even play in overtime. But uh, you know, Coach Tang addressed that and said he just they need to see more from a conditioning standpoint, from a physically game ready standpoint, before they give him more minutes. Um, you touched on it. I thought, now, if someone looks at the stat sheet, I'm assuming, you're going to say, wow, Hunter Dickinson still got his, and and he was better than K.J. Adams. Um, But if you watch that game without looking at the stat sheet, I thought Kansas State, I won't say they took away Hunter Dickinson, but I thought they contained him pretty well because it just never seemed like he was his dominant self that controlled that game. I thought when... K, or KU needed their big buckets or needed a guy to take over a time or two. It was more the guards. It was Kevin McCuller and it was Dewan Harris had a couple of big shots too. And, and then they made Kevin McCuller pretty inefficient if I can remember correctly of how that game unfolded. So just a really good defensive effort. But, you know, I know the stat sheet says Hunter Dickinson was better than K.J. Adams. But for me, I, I felt like K.J. Adams had a bigger impact. Yeah, look, Hunter Dickinson, he ends up here, – here's the note on him. As I, was, I was going to look at it real quick. Hunter Dickinson on the season is a 59% shooter from the field. As we know, big guys are closer to the bucket, all that stuff, so the average is going to be better. K-State forced him to go 8 for 18 tonight, 44%. So that's why, even though he still got his with the 21 points and 12 boards – why it did feel like K-State was able to come through. Because you forced him to miss more shots than he took, which is a rarity. Now, one other thing that will add is a positive for K-State. And you look at the box score and you go, is that really a positive? I mean, they still turned it over 16 times. That is improvement for K-State, especially in a game where you played five extra minutes. And they were clean finally when they needed to be. They struggled a little bit early on there. Uh, They never really wanted to put the game away or take it when they had the chance, but they came through. And I think it was a step in the right direction, especially when you look at the main three guys who had really struggled this year when it came to turnovers. I mean, Carter, Kaluma, and Perry, they still combined for 10 in the game. That's, you know, a little more than you would like, but they were better. I I would, but the only thing, and, and I know you had to extract this out to overtime, the only thing I would knock a little bit there is that I think the final tally was what, still 21 to 8? And points off turnovers. Yes. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's really what matters. Yep. Yeah. KU, KU stayed in this game because of the points off turnovers, essentially. Yeah. And Kansas State, you could say, probably won the game because, and there's not a big advantage here, but they didn't let KU pound them on the glass, right? I think they outscored KU in second chance points, eight to six. That's not like, oh, you won the game because you outscored them by two. No, you won the game because you held KU to six. Yep. Great point. Last guy that needs to be mentioned here, Tyler Perry. His last three games now, 23 points against Oklahoma, 19 against Oklahoma State, 26 tonight. He came through. This might have been his most efficient game combined with a high-scoring output. In addition to all that, he played all 45 minutes tonight. Cam Carter came close. He sat for 27 seconds of the game. But Tyler Perry played all 45 minutes, the full 45 tonight, and K-State needed every minute of it. And it does feel like, as the three guys are coming together and putting their games together all at once, 
Tyler Perry is doing his to a different level because we might be getting the version of Tyler Perry that K-State fans were promised. Yeah, not not quite uh, getting getting there from the three point line. I think just getting there. What I, what I'm really starting to be impressed with is, yeah, it makes you pull your hair out because they look like they they are dilly dallying for the entire shot clock on still way too many possessions, but he's finding a way and he's even getting a little bit better around the basket. You know, some of those look like circus shots, but heck heck they're starting to be more frequent and at least a little bit more efficient he's getting some three-point plays around there because of it uh he gets beat to hell he, like i know people roll their eyes a little bit but man he probably gets one of the worst whistles in terms of just body checking and hand checking for a point guard and he's trying to do a lot like tonight uh, you know he has to fight through adversity almost every game because he has to do so much for this team in a role that he wasn't supposed to have and do it something he's never done. And that's probably chewed into his three-point shooting as well. Uh, you know, I'm just as guilty of criticizing him a lot sometimes too. But man, you know, tonight you just kind of got that warrior mentality from him. Like you said, he's one of the guys that, that carried him. You know, you asked me three guys that really pop into my head in terms of, man, they were really good tonight. And that's why Kansas State was able to do what they did against Kansas for a second year in a row. Tyler Perry jumps off the page. Cam Carter still jumps off the page to me, too, especially the way he started the game. Yeah, because you, you needed this crowd in it for the four, 45 minutes, and that was going to require I, – I said it to, I think, Wyatt Thompson before the game. I said, this team needs a fast start because give the crowd a reason to believe, start to do it. And they, they did that, and Cam Carter was a big reason for that. Um, he had some key uh, steals as well, I, I believe. Uh, another guy was Jarrell Colbert. We've already kind of sang his praises. I will say David Gasson had some really big defensive plays and rebounds as well. He was plus 19 in this game, so his plus minus was the best out of anybody on the floor tonight. So big time. Well, and now, just a few things. I know he didn't play a bunch, and he had a couple negative plays where I think he tried to do too much with some passing and maybe some over dribbling. But we're starting to see more good moments each game from Day Day Ames, I believe. I would agree with that. He had a 3-9 to nine that was big. He's taking it to the bucket, gets to the free throw line. He, he's doing better things and might allow him to be on the floor a little bit more. One other thing that needs to be mentioned here that we haven't yet because there's so many other good things to talk about tonight for K-State, and as many of you know, we've been short on those things the last couple of weeks. K-State was down two at halftime. They come out, and KU immediately jumps to an 11-point lead in the second half and K-State answered back very easily. Could have just been game over at that point. It feels like, obviously, in a lot of past K-State-KU matchups, that's when KU just runs away with the game. Tonight, that was not the case. That's a credit to this K-State team. Now, And those were the big Tyler Perry shots. I think he made eight points in an 11-0 run. Yeah, so now K-State is to 5-5 five and five in Big 12 play. They are 500. Ten games in, eight games left. It's a roundabout way to get there, but you know Jerome Tang, he said it after the Oklahoma game about how the order might look different to people than what they expected, but you just got to get to nine. Is five and five about right for K-State where you would have at least expected them to be or maybe just hoped them to be 10 games into Big 12 play? Maybe a hair under, just especially since they started four and one, right? But every team goes, I mean, I've tried to say this too, and I know it's, it's hard because we live in the moment sometimes. But the K-State team last year with Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson, end of January, start of February, lost four or five. This team just lost four or five. It's, it's, I mean, that team didn't lose four straight, but still was four or five. And this one, you know, so you're going to have these ebbs and flows to, I mean, KU is six and four. I mean, technically you're one game behind KU right now. So it's it's so hard to win. Right, and and it's so hard to win on the road right now. KU did or K State did it at West Virginia, but that's because they got the worst version of West Virginia. Uh, they, I, here's what I think. I, I think he's he might be right at nine and nine, but you, you're just they're gonna harp on the quality one and quality two or quadrant one and two wins so much, and then you. Is the the Oklahoma State loss? Is that going to be three? Yeah, that's a quad three. That's kind of your black eye at the moment. Does USC creep into quad three? That's a concern. So, what my goal would be is 
to win the remaining four at home? Yeah, TCU, Iowa State, West Virginia, and I'm forgetting somebody, I think, maybe. TCU, Iowa State. Drew, we got – Oh, and BYU, there you go. So those are – I mean, those are all – Winnable games and good opponents that will be coming in. And as we know, Iowa State and BYU, props to them for gaming the system. I mean, West Virginia is probably the worst, but West Virginia will be dicey just because, like you said, K-State got the worst version of West Virginia. Jesse Edwards is back. They look better. They are fighting with teams. But the opportunity is there, and certainly with a win like this, you can believe now it's just about like what we've talked about this entire time is making sure that this performance tonight, and Jerome Tang said it too, is the real version of this team and that he said, Jerome Tank said they told on themselves yep. that they can play like this. Now they have to choose to do that every game. Absolutely. And to complete the thought, I think you need to get those, the, the goal or the uh, what I think the mission would be to get those four home games. And we said Iowa State, BYU, TCU, and West Virginia. Yep. And I think you got to steal one on the road yep. uh, to, to feel good about it. I think you got to steal one on the road. Can you steal one to Provo? Uh, I don't know, but. Oh, uh, that can't see that far away, Drew. Yeah, but yeah. my my eyes would be terrible. Up, yeah, appreciate that. So you got you got to go to BYU. I'm not sure I feel great about that. Um, where else do we got to go? <laughs> Drew's trying to help. Yeah, us. I mean Cincinnati is on there, which will probably is the most gettable. But Cincinnati's been a tough place for teams to go on the road this season. So there there are going to be games out there. Oh, and Texas, which. Actually, has been uh, you know not the worst place for teams to play. UCF won there. there, yeah. yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but for K State tonight is a good night. You got Everybody, to Norman to get nope, a- no, no trip to Norman. Uh, thank goodness I've seen some nasty games there. Some one then technically. No, I think I think you, I, Drew, we got stats and info over here. Drew, you just want to say it? You just want? To- oh yeah, we got, we've named them all here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, KU. Yeah, oh yeah, we do. Ha- we do have to go watch K State play KU again. Oh, so that'll be a tricky stretch for K State. That's a that's a, a two games back to back at Cincinnati at KU. That's for another time though. Everybody should we celebrate were, we and enjoy this. We were trying to dodge the Sunflower Showdown at Lawrence. Hey, yeah, needs to go there. Only teams like Iowa State can be so lucky to get that honor, and then they're the ones that wanted to complain about it. But everybody should celebrate this win tonight. It's a big one. It should not be overlooked. Look. I am Debbie Downer. I am aware of that. This makes the last couple of games hurt that much more for K-State. But they proved that they can get big wins, that they're capable of playing good basketball, and there is the opportunity there moving forward to step up and put themselves in a good spot. My argument would be that you played so bad against Oklahoma at home that yeah, you weren't winning that one. And Oklahoma State, like, yeah, that's silly. But I think the one they actually wish they wouldn't let slip away because it's because it was a quadrant one win that they literally let slip away. No, not Iowa State. Texas Tech. I mean, yeah, Texas Tech is the one that looking they, back, they were up. even with the four-game losing streak, things feel wildly different if K-State has that win over Texas Tech because we'd, we'd be calling K-State an NCAA tournament team right now even with the bad stretch we just saw. And they, and they had the lead in that one. Like, Iowa State, you play, you made it a 40-minute game for the most part. But Texas Tech, that was a game like you should have won. And Joe Toussaint, like, Switches pivot foot ten times and there you go. Yep, that's hey Texas Tech got their money's worth out of those feet from Joe Toussaint uh, all the way back to the start of Big Twelve play. All right, everybody, live it up. Big win for the Cats. There is positive momentum moving forward. Huge opportunity for them on the road Saturday in Provo, nine o'clock Central Time start against the Cougars. The good news for K-State is with that road trip, you have all this time off now to rest up and get ready for that game. It's not like a Wednesday to Saturday turnaround and a long road trip, so the opportunity is there. And then if the, if K-State can win in Provo on Saturday, they have a full week off until TCU comes to Bramlage Coliseum. So next week will be their midweek without a game. We'll see how it all goes. But for tonight, it was a good night in Manhattan, 75-70. The Cats win it in overtime. Shout out to the guy I saw on the concourse at halftime that uh, – told me he'd be watching and hope that uh, I had something good to talk about after the game. I'd say we had something good to talk about after the game. Yeah, we did. All right, for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth, and uh, for our just top researcher, Drew Galloway, behind the camera, thanks for watching K-State Online.